Hello, everyone. You are listening to the LockingYourSuccess.com Trading Performance Podcast with Master Trading Performance Coach John Locke, where it's all about real traders, real problems, and real coaching. This is episode number 13, and today I'd like to talk to you about questioning your own thoughts and beliefs. Now, a comment that I often hear goes something like this. I'd love to start making money with trading, but I have a reason. And then you can fill in the blank for whatever that reason is for you. So for the most common reason that I've heard recently is the market is overextended or overvalued, and I don't want to lose money when the market crashes. Well, I'm not going to argue with you whether or not the market is overvalued or it's overextended or whether or not the market is going to crash. But I will challenge the belief that because the market is overvalued, it means that it's going to crash. And if it does happen to crash, I'm also going to challenge the belief that the crash means you're going to actually lose money. Look, as far as a market crash, something can happen in the world at any time that may create a market crash. And that thing, whatever it is, it may happen when the market's overvalued. It may happen when the market's normally valued. Or it may even happen when the market's undervalued. We simply don't know. In the same context, a market can continue to be overvalued for many, many years. And in addition to that, an overvalued market doesn't have to resolve itself in a crash. It can also resolve itself through a gradual downtrend. It can resolve itself through an extended sideways market over a period of years. Or it can even resolve itself through a very slow, gradual up move. If, of course, the economy continues to expand. My point being, no one knows when, if, or how an overvalued market is going to resolve itself, nor do we know for certain when a crash is coming, nor the severity of the, that crash when it does happen. Now, the great part about trading the types of option strategies that we trade here at Locking Your Success is that it really doesn't matter. Many strategies perform awesome in slow uptrending markets. They do even better in sideways markets. And some of the strategies even do well in downtrending markets and even during market crashes. And yes, if the markets do have a severe crash, it's true that we, we might lose a trade because of the uh, unusual market behavior. But so what? Losing trades is part of being a trader. And it's going to happen from time to time, regardless of the type of market we happen to be in at any given time. So if the market crash begins and we lose a trade, the great thing is it's not that big a deal. We close the trade, we're out of the market, and once we're out of the market, we can then decide if and when we want to go back into that market. Just as we do any other time, we might happen to lose a trade. My point being... We've traded market crashes before, and we've lost some money in some of those crashes, true. But we've also made money in some of those crashes, sometimes a lot of money. That's right, it is possible to make money during market crashes. So while you're sitting there missing out on some of the best trading opportunities we've had in history, waiting for the crash that may never come, you could be missing out on years of fantastic return. And even if the market crash were to come, it doesn't necessarily mean we're going to lose. Realize that it's not the overextended market that's keeping you from trading. I know this because I've seen the same situation and the same scenario play itself out many, many times over the years. Traders waiting for years in an overvalued market, waiting for it to crash, and when it does, when that crash finally comes, do you know what they say? Oh, the market's too volatile now. I might lose money. I'm going to wait until the market calms down. So they wait, and they wait, and they wait until finally they convince themselves that the markets have calmed down and it's okay to go back in. And by the time that happens, wouldn't you know it? The damn market's overvalued again. I guess I need to wait for the next market crash before I start trading. Realize that if you're waiting for the perfect time, 
to begin trading or to get back into trading. It'll never come. There's always a reason not to trade. There's always an excuse not to try. And there will always be a risk that is present where you might lose money, where you might fail temporarily. But so long as you choose to remain overly focused on that risk, you'll never even give yourself a chance to discover how, re how rewarding trading can be for you. Look, it's a fantastic market right now. We have traders in our membership that are up over $50,000 in January alone. So if you're not in the market, or you're trading small out of fear, or you call yourself uh, risk-averse, risk you are missing out. Don't get me wrong. I fully understand the fear. I, too, have thoughts and feelings revolving around fear, around potentially losing money, potentially a lot of money, and how disastrous that could turn out to be. We all do. But the difference between a trader who sits on the sidelines and the one who does spectacularly well in the market is this. The trader who sits on the sidelines actually buys into the scary thoughts and feelings that he's having. He believes them to be true. While the trader who's making it happen and who is tremendously successful, he sees those thoughts for what they are, simply thoughts. The effective trader realizes that the primitive mind likes things the way they are. He realizes that it's normal for the primitive mind to see any substantial change as risking its survival, as risking your survival. Therefore, the primitive mind wants to avoid any potential risk, and it'll do so by identifying problems and throwing out scary thoughts. And if you can't find any scary facts, that's not a problem. Because your primal mind loves to make things up. It will produce thoughts and feelings that are intended to hold you back and keep you in the same old familiar place, doing the same old familiar thing, and in this case, perhaps it's not trading. But the successful trader realizes it's all a ploy. It's a trick your mind plays on you to keep you where you are and ultimately keep you from achieving the success you truly seek in trading. So when those thoughts and feelings come up, the successful trader, he doesn't automatically believe them to be true, but rather he sees them as interesting and he questions them. He looks for instances where the opposite belief might also be true. So for example, let's take the, the statement, the market is overextended, or the market is overvalued, and I'm waiting for it to crash before I start trading because I don't want to lose money when it crashes. If we take that and we actually break that down, in the sentence we have the statement, the market is overvalued. Let's challenge that. Is that actually true? Is that an undeniable fact, or is it simply an opinion or a belief held by a certain group of people? If I do my research, I find that according to a lot of people and to many of the traditional indicators, that yes, the market does appear to be extremely overvalued. However, if I search for the opposite opinion, I also find quite a few very, very smart people who believe the market is quite undervalued and that the old historical indicators, that they're no longer valid in what they call this new economy. And they believe that in this new economy, we will never see the low valuations in the stock market that we've seen in the past. So who's right? I don't know. But this being the case, I can tell you the overvaluation of the market is not an undeniable fact. It's simply a widely held opinion. And if the opposite opinion happens to be true, if the market truly is undervalued, then it could continue to climb for quite some time or even remain sideways for quite some time. Let's look at the next segment in that sentence here. Uh, I'm waiting for the market to crash before I start. Well, first of all, what's your definition of a crash? How far specifically does the market have to come down before you're convinced it's okay to start trading? 
What if the market doesn't crash for years? What if it doesn't crash for decades? How much time do you have? What if the market never returns to those old valuations, ever? And even if it does crash, what are the market conditions after a crash? Are those good market conditions for trading? So why do you think those conditions after the market crash are better than the conditions are right now? And the last part of the statement says, I don't want to lose money when it crashes. This implies that we know the market is going to crash, which is an opinion, and it probably will crash at some point. But it may be tomorrow. It might be 30 years from now. We don't know. It also implies that you'll lose money when the market crashes, which may be true temporarily if you're uh, if you own the normal stocks or your long you know market ETFs like the SPY or you have mutual funds, yeah. But it isn't necessarily true at all if you're doing options trades. If that's the case, you may actually make money. My point being, the information you're basing the decision off of when to start trading, the information is opinions and hearsay. It's not factual, nor does it define the conditions where you'll be able to get back in and not risk losing money. A, condi a set of conditions, in my opinion, which doesn't exist. This being the case, you're actually setting yourself up to never enter the market. And you're failing in advance. Because in the meantime, while you're waiting for this imagined perfect situation that may never come, other traders are in the markets honing their craft and becoming better traders while taking advantage of what I see as the best trading environment we've experienced in years and may last for years to come. Realize time is going to pass you by. Time that you're never ever going to get back. So if you're considering becoming a trader, I urge you to start today. Don't allow opinions and imagined fears to cause you to miss out on what could be years of great returns. There's a popular Chinese proverb that says, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is now. So here's my statement. In 20 years, you're going to wish you had started trading 20 years ago. But you didn't. You are waiting for the best time. The next best time to start trading is now. I'm going to start trading today because there will be no better time than now. And that is what I have for you today. I encourage you to visit us at LockingYourSuccess.com so that you too can break through barriers and make quantum leaps in your trading and in your life. Thank you for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you in the next Trading Performance Podcast. Hey, if you enjoyed listening to this podcast, you have to check out my Trading Performance Membership, where we take all this material to the next level. We study it and we apply it to bring our trading performance to peak levels. Simply go to TradingPerformancePodcast.com, that's one word, TradingPerformancePodcast.com, to receive information on how you too can become involved and improve your trading. I look forward to seeing you there.